there's one overseas contract Aspen Medical does not boast about. It was a contract to help build a multi-million dollar hospital in Sri Lanka in 2012. Now it's been caught up in a high level corruption and money laundering investigation. We've travelled all the way here to Hambantota on Sri Lanka's southern coast to investigate this 900 bed hospital and to determine what role Aspen Medical really played in its construction. Aspen Medical was subcontracted by a Dutch company called EN Projects. It was backed by an Australian government guarantee on the basis it would supply equipment and medical design for the hospital. Andrew Walker says he remembers nothing of the sort. It was presented to me that we were facilitating a loan and by that I, I assume that mean we were introducing someone to a financier and that we would be paid some kind of introduction fee or other. What did Aspen actually do in Sri Lanka then? I, I don't know. Do you have any recollection of Aspen ever deploying staff in Sri Lanka? No, no, definitely not. I, I, I can say with absolute clarity that we've, we've never deployed staff in Sri Lanka. For Andrew Walker, the alarm bells rang when he tried to open a new bank account and was refused. Then very shortly afterwards, my own bank sent me an email and they were basically saying I had some questions that I had to answer because of my association with Aspen Medical, uh, to which I was very much taken aback. Um, I, I spoke to the bank, and but most of it was by email, but I, I spoke to the bank and um, I, it was suggested to me that Aspen had been mentioned in a corruption case in Sri Lanka. Four Corners has obtained this internal Aspen Medical spreadsheet, which indicates the company's role was purely as a financial intermediary. It shows Aspen receiving funds, then paying those same funds back out to contractors in return for a 4% handling fee. None of this was presented at any board meeting. I was pretty much unawares of it all until I finally got a, a spreadsheet with some numbers in um, and, and, and looked at the numbers and looked at the margins, a reasonable margin. This all happened while you were a director and a 50% shareholder. How can you say, sitting there today, that you really did not know what was going on? Easily, because I didn't know what was going on. I'm very comfortable that... that um, I was completely unaware of this. The spreadsheet reveals the first and largest of Aspen Medical's payments were made to a mysterious company called Sabre Vision Holdings, domiciled in the notorious tax haven of the British Virgin Islands. The payments totaled 1.4 million euros, now about 2 million Australian dollars. The company was owned by a high-flying Sri Lankan businessman, Nimal Pereira, who has since been implicated in a series of corruption scandals, including a global bribery scheme. Is there any legitimate reason that an Australian medical company, as its first act in Sri Lanka, pays $2 million to Nimal Pereira? for a hospital project? Is there any way that... Because Nimal Pereira has nothing to do with hospital projects. You know, he's, he's nothing. Even during him, I also know him personally. He has never spoken to me for any projects in the health sector. He has nothing to do with the health uh, uh, sector projects because he's, uh, he's for, you know, other financial um, things and other industries, uh, but nothing to do with uh, health. So why would Aspen Medical pay his offshore company $2 million. That is for somebody else. I'm shocked, shocked that an Australian company, an Australian company who gets a contract, right, in this country, right, makes a payment for a contract to a third party in another country for a registered company, and then subsequently to find out that that company is also owned by a Sri Lankan. I'm really shocked at it, that a thing like this should have happened. Nimal Pereira has emerged as a bagman for the ruling Rajapaksa family. In 2016, it was Pereira's confession which prompted the spectacular arrest 
of the Prime Minister's son, Namal Rajapaksa. Pereira had admitted to collecting millions of rupees on Rajapaksa's behalf from a real estate company. In your opinion, would you describe Nimal Pereira as a collector? For of course, of course. On behalf of the Rajapaksa's family, he was the famous collector of the, their family. Oh, and there's Aspen Medical. Aspen Medical. And it was anti-corruption campaigner Wasantha Samarasinghe who tipped off the police. Australia and New Zealand Banking Group. That is the account uh, used by the Aspen, Aspen Medical, Medical to send the money to the Singapore Observation accounts. Triggering the years-long probe by Sri Lanka's FCID, or Financial Crimes Investigation Division, into suspected money laundering offences. He want to protect the Rajapaksa's uh, connections and firstly he tried to hide the, all uh, these connections. Finally, CID found so many details, that's why he couldn't continue that lie. The police could find no evidence that Sabervision Holdings or Nimal Pereira had performed any service for the money paid by Aspen Medical. Those funds never went to the hospital. The money trail led here to this property in an affluent suburb of Colombo. Nimal Pereira purchased it with some of the money from Sabervision Holdings. But what really caught the attention of police was that it was soon combined with the property immediately next door. It housed the private offices of Namal Rajapaksa, the then president's son. The question was obvious. Was Nimal Pereira again secretly collecting money for the Rajapaksa family, this time from the hospital contractors? And if so, what was the role of Aspen Medical? Hello. Hello. Nimal Pereira agreed to an interview at his house. Hi. Hello, how are you? Richard Besser from ABC Australia. Tell me about your career. I, I want to know what sectors of the economy that you have worked in. You specialise in capital markets and securities, yeah, that's but right. never in the health sector. You don't work in the health sector. No, no, never in the health sector, but I was into leisure, uh, then uh, manufacturing and uh, finance and capital markets. But, uh, if, but you, you've never been a supplier of medical equipment? Or... Oh, never, never, never in my career. Mr Pereira told us he was an agent for the head hospital contractor but never did anything for Aspen Medical. So why did Aspen Medical pay you two payments of 687,000 euros? To me? To you? No, Aspen has not paid to me. Nothing at all? No, no. It sent the money into the accounts of your British Virgin Islands company? No, it's wrong. Sabre Vision Holdings? Yeah, that is my previous uh, employer. At the time of those transactions, according to business documents from the British Virgin Islands, there was only one beneficiary of Sabre Vision Holdings, and that was Mr. Nimal Pereira. No, that is because of my default. Since I became the managing director of that company, I became the beneficial lawyer. Mr. Pereira's explanation to Four Corners differed wildly from what he originally told the police. When you were questioned about that property purchase and where the money came from, you told the police that it came from an Italian businessman. Yes. That was wrong, wasn't it? No, it is not wrong. It's and you told the police that Sabre Vision Holdings was associated with this Italian businessman. No, I don't know. I can't remember. But that was a lie, wasn't it? No, I can't remember. Why did you try to hide the payments? So why do you want to know all these things? Well, try my question. Why did you want to try and hide the payments? What payments? The payments that Aspen Medical put into Sabre Vision Holdings. No, I don't want to answer, so you can go. Well, we're just trying to understand why it would be that Aspen Medical would pay you that kind of money. Riddled by corruption, Sri Lanka is now on the precipice of economic collapse. After returning to power, the Rajapaksa regime has shelved the Aspen medical case and sacked its investigators. The former State Minister of Finance still wants answers. I thought even in Australia there will be checks and balances, right?
of how the Australian private sector works, whom they are paying, what they are paying for. And also, they need to be investigated also then for money laundering, including the Australian company. Aspen Medical told Four Corners it had not received any requests from any government agency or court of law anywhere in the world for information on Nimal Pereira or Sabervision Holdings, but we would be happy to support them if such an inquiry was made. It said, we have a strong set of values that would preclude us working with organisations involved in corrupt practices. Aspen also said it was driven by a social purpose and maintained a commitment to the highest standards of service delivery. I think the government needs to ask itself whether it is there to try and fill the pockets of a donor and a company that doesn't have a great track record, or whether it's there to ensure that people who need help get it. There's no question that there is an industry around trying to exploit as much money as you can, often at the expense of the misery and suffering of others. Where's the accountability? Who holds the federal government accountable for these failings? Who? My sense is Aspen just keeps getting rewarded for bad performance. Not just bad performance, for yeah, bad performance with dire consequences. So unacceptable, unacceptable. But who's holding them accountable? I think that Aspen forgot that they were treating people. What were they thinking about instead? Profits. They were thinking about profits.